can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a path along a path that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home <laughs> but until You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Antidote to Deception Internet Radio. On today's presentation, we are looking at the topic, times and seasoning. It's a most important thought, and I would like to share it with you right after we pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us, O God. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may indict, O God, the words that are going out to the nations in this message. Lord, speak to your people like never before and let your words have repercussions, not just for right now, but for the rest of our lives, O God, as we continue to be a part of these end time scenarios. So now I pray, dear God, that you'll come and bless the hearts of your people. Touch their very souls, O oh God, with words of your spirit, words of life, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Our scripture reading comes to us from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 1 to 6 reads like this. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 
verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that, that they should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Remember Jesus said to the Pharisees one time that you could see that the sky is red and you could say, oh well, it's about to rain or it's about to storm or what the case may be. But he said to them, you cannot discern the signs of the times. That didn't necessarily mean that they didn't know about the signs of the times and the events, like say for instance about Christ's birth. They themselves would have been knowledgeable of the fact of Isaiah 9.6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. They themselves were prophesied about the Messiah. But when he was here in actual flesh, they would not acknowledge him as such. They could tell you about different scenarios that would take place because it was written down in the books that they read every Sabbath in the synagogue. But their lives did not testify that they knew of these things. But, unlike the Pharisees of old, those of us who profess to be Christians, not only do we know about the prophecies, for the most part, for a large part in fact, the things of prophecy have become history, and there are only a few pages left in the prophetic record. But the same situation, the same conditions are plaguing us. We too, we too are not discerning the times and the season. We too don't have a clue, not about the prophetic understanding, but for the fact that we're not living up to the understanding. Notice what it says in verse 2 of First Thessalonians 5, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. Meaning that they would understand that for the most part, that people who are not prepared for the thief are caught unawares and their house is broken into and their stuff taken. But those who prepared, even if they are asleep, they have an alarm system, they have a watchdog, they have protection here, there, and everywhere around the house. So too, beloved, the Apostle Paul is saying that we are not of those who don't have a clue in terms of not knowing what the prophecy is. But I submit to you that we have not a clue because we're not preparing for the event. We speak about the event Many people use terms like rapture and tribulation and time of trouble, etc. But they continue to go on in the everyday. Beloved, the Holy Spirit just put a word in my mind this morning and I said, I had to share this with you. And so I'm sharing. We are getting so caught up with the distractions that the Word of God is not getting any traction in our lives. We're so caught up with the technology and the latest gadgets and the latest gossip that our minds, our hearts have been crowded out with the things of this world. Beloved, now that we know, we got to show. And so I encourage you as we close to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Times and seasoning. The times we are aware of, the seasoning is the actual dressing, the preparation for the event. How do you speak to others? What's your relationship with your co-workers, your family, your friends, your loved ones? Are we getting our hearts ready for home. In Romans 13, 11 to 14, the Bible says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, 
and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, in verse 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Friends, we're living, it goes without saying, in the last remnant of time. But, beloved, we are not living in this last remnant of time. In fact, we are dead as a doornail, as the saying goes. We have no life in us because we want no life in us. We are eating dead food. We are subsisting on dead gossip, on dead entertainment, on dead politics, on dead, I dare say, religion. It is time that the people of God would arise and be wide awake to the reality of where we are in world history. It's sad that it takes a hurricane, a terrorist attack, a death in the family to jerk us back to reality, but that only lasts for a time and a season. Beloved, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. We have to, we have to, beloved, get it right because it's now or really never. I pray that you understand these things that are being presented to you and that you would have understood these things that are being presented to you, beloved. Just because we have the intellectual knowledge doesn't mean that we have the heart experience that will take us through the final end time events. Beloved, before we close, I just want to ask you right now that if you won't, if you won't, just pause right now and just take a retrospective look back at 2018. First of all, did you ever think that you would be living in 2018 the way that the world is and the way that things are going? And for those of you who are parents, grandparents even, did you think it? Yet here we are. And we're told, as you often know, and hear me saying, as you often hear me saying, that you often, know, often hear me saying, that Christ will not come until his character is perfectly, perfectly reproduced in his people. Let that, beloved, let that spirit actuate you. Let everything that you know be dressed in Christ, put on Christ, dear friends, as that final seasoning that would get you ready for the coming of our Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for speaking to our hearts. Father, I pray for any person who is in the value of decision, have not known you as Savior, and would like to do so, O oh dear God, that you would please reach out to such a one and bring him to your side. Father, I pray for those of us who claim that we know but have been living contrary, that we've been doing things contrary, that we've been thinking contrary, speaking contrary. I pray, dear God, that you will come and wisen us up, Lord. Wake us up, Lord, and reach us. Lord, reach us like never before, O oh God. The world has a stranglehold on us, dear God. I pray for your spirit, dear God, that we may be broken, that we're not held slaves to the things of this world, but the things, O oh God, of your spirit. Father, forgive us where we have slacked off, and I pray, dear God, that you will revive and reform us to, con re to continue and carry on the work that you've called us to do, that you've called us out of darkness into this more blessed light, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, before I get off the air this morning, I just want to invite you, those of you who are in the South Florida, Miami area, to our Truth in Love Advent Ministries first camp in over seven years at Camp Reynolds in beautiful North Miami Beach. For more information, please text or WhatsApp or call area code 954-478-4673. That's area code 954-478-4673. Also, I would like you to visit the antidote to deception.com and click on the link on the homepage that says Signs of the Times if you are not aware of these end time events that we've been talking about. Again, that's the antidote to deception.com. I thank you so much, dear friends, for joining me on this rather short but necessary edition of the Antidote to Deception Internet Radio. I pray by the grace of God that you would have been blessed, that your heart would have been watered, and that as we go forward, that it is with a spirit 
Oh, yes, I know the signs of the times, but more importantly, I want to live the signs of the times.